very quick note before I let you guys enjoy this video. On Monday, June 1st, 8.30 a.m. CEST, we are going to be doing a stream for the new sets that we have in both Japanese and English. Vanguard Zero, of course, starting with Japanese because that comes off maintenance sooner. And of course, it's going to be the Aichi Birthday Festival. Now, last time we did this, we hit a thousand viewers at a certain point during the pack opening. And I want to break this record. So I hope to see you guys on twitch.tv slash different fight on Monday at 8.30 a.m. CEST. So I hope to see you there. But on that note, enjoy the main video. Hello folks and welcome to the set 4 uh, review and now you can enjoy chat saying hello uh, to YouTube but we are going to be uh, looking at the new cards from this latest set so we're going to look at, we have 5 clans to cover, OTT, Novas, Royal Paladin, Shadow Paladin and Kagero and so we're going to take it in order, more or less, I, can't, I like every clan honestly so there's not really a particular order, we're just going to look at like maybe least to most impactful and so OTT got some support, but it wasn't very impactful. So some of the new things it got in terms of grade ones is the witches. So we got Witch Lala here, who is an on play If you have no cards in soul, uh, you basically uh, draw discard one to draw one. So basically just filtering through your deck. She's just a rare, but she will be important in witches. Um, and then of course Battle Sister uh, Omelet will be very important in witches as well. I mean on witches in I guess in witches too because it's soulless, but it's gonna be important in battle sisters when that comes out in set six. So that's something. This also came out, which is the um Ryan. So this is an on attack, soul boss one and discard one to give one of your other units plus one three K. So not that great in grade one, but this has a grade three version, which is actually played. The swallow was a bouncer, so nothing too important there. Then looking at the grade twos. We basically have uh, more new Battle Sisters, so we have the uh, Glass. So this is during your turn, if you have no cards in soul, it gets plus 3k, which is also very nice. Oh yeah, so we have to cover the starter as well, that's actually a very important one. Let me go back to that. Uh, we do have this, which is the Lulu. Lulu is actually the most important card for OTT, um, because this will be used in both Coco as well as in Battle Sisters. So her skill is, in the soul, when you ride your grade 3 Vanguard, um, then you call her out of your soul. So basically, you get the the Forerunner skill then. And then when she's placed from your soul on Reguard Circle, you may Soul Blast 2 to draw 1. So this empties out your soul for Coco, and basically is how you achieve that condition. And so it's an extra draw as well, so you can keep your hand uh, healthy, as well as having an extra unit on board as well. So that's a very important starter if you're planning to play Coco. Moving back to the Great 2s though, uh, we have this, which is against the same thing. Uh, when it attacks, if you have no cards in soul, you may draw one and put one to the bottom. So this is like the new filtering ability that Solus has. So basically, like, it kind of stacks, but of course it's nowhere near as fast as Tsukuyomi. But you wouldn't use this in Tsukuyomi, but it is pretty good. Like, if you're playing Coco, you are going to play this, just for the filter. Like, you know, it's still better than nothing. This is from set 5, or set 6 rather. And then for grade 3s, we have, of course, Coco herself. So during your turn, if you have no cards in your soul, she gets plus 3k. So she's a 13k attacker, so she can hit against the cross rides. Very important. And then uh, her other skill is Vanguard Circle when placed. If you have one or less soul, you may counter blast 2 to draw 2. So basically when you ride her, you take out the Lulu, soul blast 2 to draw 1. And then you use her skill to counter blast 2 to draw another 2. So basically you get 3 cards in hand. And you can rewrite her again next turn. And you still have 1 soul to use her skill again to draw 2. Which is nice. So she draws you a lot of cards. But sadly the 10k base is quite damaging. And she doesn't actually show up in the meta too much. So sadly OTT still stays as Tsukuyomi. And the one new card that Tsukuyomi does play is the uh, Gentle Jim. And Gentle Jim's skill is when he attacks you may soul blast 1 and discard 1. So this is basically when you have like a bit of excess soul from using uh, Tsukuyomi's ability and you have like some random cards that you want to get rid of. Um, you basically, when it attacks, you soul blast 1 and discard 1 and for that turn give one of your units plus 3k. Now the reason why this is good is because you can now make magic numbers against MLB because you have a 14 vanguard with an 8k so that hits for 22 and with a 7k boost it's 21 so it's still magic numbers and also you can buff up your Tom uh, to actually hit over cross right numbers as well which is the main function of him as well. Uh, so basically this, just get, this gets added into uh, Tsukuyomi but no other big changes outside of that. So that's for OTT. Moving on to Nova Grappler we have over here. Uh, so a couple new things get added. We get the Beast Deity White Tiger. So his skill is Forerunner and then 
When the attack it boosted hits a vanguard, you may kind of almost want to put him into your soul to stand one of your beast deity rearguards. So we're going to take a look at what kind of rearguards you can stand. Um, so looking at the other support we have, here's beast deity vermilion bird. So when his attack hits the vanguard, you may look at the top five cards of your deck and add a azure dragon to your hand and shuffle the rest. So you don't have to discard anything. It's just on hit, look at top five, add an azure dragon. So this... Is unfortunate because it's only an on hit uh, ability and a 6k body but of course it is a plus one but it's not a boost ability so you will play this just for the name for now because there's not that many beast deities but they will add more in the future but you can restand him you know with your um with your starter then on top of that they did get this which is the almighty reporter so he's just like one of the attacker boost that hits it goes back to hand so another bouncer and then they also got the rocket hammerman who is just, you can rest him, and for that turn, give another unit plus 2k. So, nothing too crazy, but good enough, I guess, uh, for the time being. Then, moving on, we have... I'm not sure if... The, I don't think this is new. But we do have the uh, Beast Deity Black Tortoise. So, this has the exact same skill. When his attack hits a Vanguard, uh, you could check the top 5 cards of your deck for an Azure Dragon. A Beast Deity Azure Dragon, and add it to your hand. Shuffle the rest back into your deck. So, pretty good effect just to start your Azure Dragons, but keep in mind that does take out your triggers, so that's an important thing to consider. Then we have Boomerang Thrower, who basically says that um, he can attack back row units, so basically this is like a um, Fushimi, what's it called? Um, so it's pretty interesting, but it's only on Vanguard Circle, so keep that in mind. It's like a Tejas, but only on Vanguard Circle, but I guess you may mainly only use Tejas for the Vanguard Circle effect, so maybe this will see some use. This might actually see some use in the future, I wouldn't discount it. Then we have Cup Bowler, uh, when one of your regards is rested for that turn, he gets plus one k. Uh, so the sadly the um, sadly the power buff isn't strong enough to make it better. This let me break its support card. All right, so that's that for Nova Grade Twos, and then for Grade Threes, you will be getting. I think this is already out. So Azur Dragon. Let's take a look at him. Is when his attack hits a Vanguard, he's an eleven k base body. He can Persona Blast to stand to your rearguard. So he's an on hit, but he can basically go rear guard, rear guard, and then swing with a Zerd Dragon. A Zerd Dragon hits, you drop another Zerd Dragon and stand those two rear guards, and you have two full columns ready to attack. And then, of course, you know, if you can get a trigger or something, you can, you know, get bigger power and sweat, uh, swing once again at them. So it's pretty okay. It's not its own deck, but it is actually put into risers. So the Beast Deity Azur Dragon is run in risers simply for that backup grade 3 ability. Um, and then you also get Miss Hur Miss Splendor, rather. So she basically uh, nullifies intercepts. So, I mean, it's basically blockade, isn't it? Oh no, actually she doesn't nullify them, but she ignores them. So when she attacks herself, she ignores them. So it's something. It's something. And then you get also Top Gun, who is when your rearguard is rested, gets plus 1k. So you kind of use this with, you know, like the Death Armies. You can also use it with uh, Street Bouncer and stuff like that. So that's Nova's covered. So again, kind of okay support. Nothing too fan too amazing, but still pretty good. Let's move on to Kagero. Uh, Kagero didn't get any new starters, but they did get you know some of the most impactful cards in the game. Um, one card that isn't so impactful is the Doombringer Griffin. Count us one, retire two of your rearguards to search yourself at the end. On like on paper, this might seem really good because it's like you know you essentially get to search yourself the Persona Blast, but keep in mind it's one Counter Blast, and Counter Blast is limited, even if you have a Counter Charger, and you have to sack two of your rearguards, which is a loss of tempo in my opinion. So, some people play this as a one of that they can search with Conroe, but most people skip out on it. Um, it's not really useful. And then we have the um, Makoraga, who is, when your opponent's rearguard is retired by your skill, this gets plus 5k. This won't see so much use right now, but this will actually come back in the future. This is actually a very impactful card um, in Zero, so for that reason it is pretty good. And then the new Grade 1 Airmo is actually used quite a lot. When it boosts an Overlord, Soul Blast 1, and it gets plus 4k. So it's a 10k booster, making 21k with your Rearguard Overlord columns, or 23k with your Crossride Overlord. The end. So that's pretty good in its own right. Uh, moving on, we have Striken. So we covered this last set, I think, but I'll recover it again because that's where it actually belongs. So this is um, a Restraint Vanguard, and he does not release Restraint, but he has a 10k base, and when you ride on top of him for that turn, the new Vanguard that rode on top of him gets 5k and a crit. So this saw a lot of use 
during the time when uh, Wingle Brave was not nerfed, because you basically wouldn't attack Royal Paladin players for the first two turns, and then you would go to turn three and just like ride the end and restand and hit them for four damage really quickly. If you've been watching me play in the Vanguard Zero Championship, uh, the videos that I did, I actually lost to this card in the past, so it's pretty impactful. Then Burning Horn is a during your turn if you have an Overlord Vanguard plus 3k power, so 12k attacker. See some play now, but at first did not. And then we have the Majin Zoruda, uh, Majin Soldat. So this has restraint, and then if you retire an opponent's rearguard with an ability, he loses restraint. And when he's boosted on Vanguard Circle, he gets plus 5k. So basically, it's a brutal jack all in Kagero, but with a pretty steep condition. Let's put it that way. And then lastly, we have Dragon uh, Dragon Armored Knight. So when another, if you don't have another rearguard in the same column, uh, oh no, if there isn't another unit in the same column as him, then uh, he basically loses 2k power. Uh, and then his second skill is Vanguard Rearguard Circle uh, Kamos 1 to give him plus 1k for that turn. So not really useful. More or less of a skip. <laughs> then uh, this is a when its attack hits a vanguard for that turn, given of the unit plus 3k. Not that useful, but of course the meta defining card is the end. So the end will of course change the game. It will become the best Kagrio deck in the whole you know game basically and dominate quite a lot. And so his skill is of course cross ride with the regular overlord. So he's a 13k base. And then if you don't know what cross ride is, it literally says if you have the card that is it says cross right here and then it says the card name. So if you have the card name under him in the soul, then he will gain plus 2k permanently. That's what um, cross right is. And then you also have um, when his attack hits anything, Cattle Blast 2, and discard a copy of the end. That's what Persona Blast is. And then you stand him and draw two cards. So basically, it's a 13k base that restands and draws extra cards, lets you dig through your deck. You can play a very nice filtery playstyle with it using Ermo. Um, and basically just dominate your opponent. It's a very strong card, and just absolutely amazing. This is a 12k attacker for Kagero, that basically is like your budget option if you don't have the dual axe, um, and this isn't really played, it's when you drive check a flame dragon gains plus 3k, it's terrible. And then this is a Kalmas 2 to gain 4k, also pretty bad. So Kagero, of course, gets the end, gets Dragon and Burning Horn, those are the very impactful cards. Um, this not so much, sadly, and nothing really in grade zeros. Then, moving on, we're going to do Royals next, and I'll leave Shadows for last because they're pretty going to take a while to cover. So Royals, of course, get Wingle Brave, but Wingle Brave originally is when, is boosted, when it boosts a blaster and the attack hits, you may count 1, put him into your soul, and search your deck for any blaster and add it to your hand. So you can search Blaster Blade, Blaster Dark, or Majesty Lord Blaster. But they nerfed this in, in Japanese to count 2, and you can only search Majesty Lord Blaster, so the Grade 3 blasters. Um, but uh, we don't know yet if this will be coming into English post-nerf or pre-nerf, so it's kind of hard to discuss, but if it's pre-nerf, it's one of the best starters in the game. If it's post-nerf, you're better off playing Libergull. Uh, moving on to grade 1s, we have K. K is a 10k attacker uh, when you have a Blaster Vanguard. So on turn 2, you can be a 10k attacker. Morgana is when she attacks, you may discard 1, she gets plus 5k. Pretty average. And Mirubiru is the boost returner, so nothing too crazy there. Then here, we have the... Uh, during your turn, if you have a Blaster Vanguard, it gets plus 3k, so this is 12k attacker. You usually play this as like a 2 of or 3 of in Blasters. And then finally, Starkle Trumpeter, the 2 of Searcher. So when placed, count on 2 and search your deck for any grade 2 or lower Blaster and call it. So this will search you your Blaster Blades and Blaster Darks. So it's very important, but it is a rank reward, so you can look forward to that. Then, of course, uh, before I look at MLB, we have some of the less impactful grade 3s. This is a 12k attacker when it attacks Vanguard. You're like budget Palamedes. This is a Kalamas 2, get 4k. And then this is a when he attacks, discard 1 to get 5k. Actually, you see some use sometimes. It's like a, another version of Palamedes. And then finally, the Byron is when it attacks, it's a Vanguard. Give one of your other units plus 3k. Doesn't really see much play. But Majesty Lord Blaster, of course, the best card in the game so far. Um, if you have a Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark in your soul, he has plus 2k permanently. And then his second skill is when he attacks, you may put a Blaster Blade and a Blaster Dark into your soul, and then his original critical becomes 2 for the rest of the game, and for that battle he gains plus 10,000 power. So I've already covered this deck a lot, I use this deck to get top 50 in April, and it's honestly just like one of the best cards ever printed. It has permanent crit, it has permanent 12k base, it has a power up skill as well, and it has a lot of searching going on in the deck too, so Royals come out the best out of this set. Um, and even if Wingle Brave is nerfed, I think the deck will still be the best.
that's just how I feel. So honestly, that's how I think about it. So MLB going to be meta defining, going to be super important. I've covered this deck extensively, so you can take a look at the previous videos. I basically covered every deck except for Coco and um, Beast Deities from this set. So this final part uh, of the Shadow Paladin review got a bit hectic um, in the original recording, so I decided to redo it. Also, you'll see that I'm sitting a bit further. Actually, I'm not sitting further away with a camera. I've positioned a bit further away because I managed to fix up my tripod in that sense, so it should look a little bit more uh, pleasing to the eye. I'm not as close in case you're feeling a bit claustrophobic or anything. But before we get into the Shadow Paladin review. I would also mention that a good friend of mine, you know, co-commentator Kai, he actually is doing uh, videos on his channel, the WCC channel, where he basically looks at the, some of the popular clans in the game and basically have to build them um, depending on what cards you've pulled. Because of course it is a gacha game, you know, you're not going to get everything you want unless you either, you know, put in some time to grind out the materials over like a month or two, or to, you know, put in some money. And so he does a video series, he's doing one for Shadow Paladin, I think he just did one a couple days ago, where basically he takes a look at how to build up shadows depending on the cards you've pulled. So I think for a lot of you guys that, you know, like, are maybe waiting for the raid up or like you get certain cards but not everything, you might want to take a look at that and basically get a better kind of view of how you can build up shadows based on what you've pulled. Of course, if you're whaling and you've got four times everything, it doesn't really matter. But I think for those of you that are a bit more on like the free to play side or you're taking your time with the materials and, you know, gathering all the cards, but you really love Shadow Paladin, I think that video would be really good help for you guys. And so he kind of covers content that I typically don't. And so I think it'd be good for everyone to take a look at that. But on that note, uh, we're going to take a look now at the Shadow Paladin cards. So. Shadows do have two types of starters. One is Creeping Dark Goat, which is your typical like forerunner, count plus one, put him into soul, look at top five for a grade three, add it to your hand. So this one does, isn't really run right now because we do have Fool Bow, um, which does a much better job, which is when you ride Blaster Javelin on him, you search your deck for a Blaster Dark and add it to your hand. So you instantly secure your grade two without needing to worry about it. And then uh, in the soul, when you ride Phantom Blaster Dragon, then you can call him out uh, to a rear circle. So basically he provides you another rear, another boost, and also another retire for your effects like Phantom Blaster Dragon and Phantom Blaster Overlord. Yes, you heard me right. And so then the perfect guard is Maclear, so this is the one you can exchange with PG Metals. There's some cards that aren't as great uh, that I think I should take a look at first. Uh, Gurudabao, for example, doesn't see much play. He's a 9k attacker when he attacks the Vanguard, so for grade 1 it's not that great, you don't have the intercept. Iron Rod does see some use. Uh, you rest her to ditch one, draw one, so it helps you filter for your pieces like your Persona Blast or your Nemains and things like that. But then, of course, extra pieces you can just discard with the main. Then, this card, I personally, um, all the tournament winners and like the people that top with shadows don't run this card, and I personally don't recommend it either, which is the Phantom Bringer Demon. Uh, so, this card is Canvas 1, retire two of your own rear guards to search your deck for a Phantom Blaster Overlord and add it to your hand. Now, the Persona Blast doesn't have that high of a payoff compared to the end uh, in Shadow Paladin because it's just an extra crit and power. Of course, it is only a Persona Blast, but it's not really worth it. It's not really, like, if you have it, you use it, but otherwise, you don't really, like, dedicate this many resources to using it. Like, retiring two rewards is a huge loss of tempo in Shadows, and so it's definitely not worth it. Um, Blaster Javelin that we mentioned, uh, this one is when you have Full Bow on the Soul, he's an 8k base, and then on Rearguard Circle, when placed, you may discard any grade 3 from your hand, and then search your deck for a Phantom Blaster Dragon and add it to your hand. So basically, if you don't have Phantom Blaster Dragon, you can just fix it, search it uh, with his effect, just like you can with all, a bunch of other grade 1s from Ride Chains. Karen is your 8k vanilla that you will be running, and then the Dranbao is your Blaster Dark 10k booster, so you can make a 19k column, so it's not really worth to run either. Some people do run the Nightmare Painter. This is an on place. Uh, choose one card from your hand and add it to your soul. Basically, if you, for example, just ride directly to Phantom Blaster Overlord, you can take a Phantom Blaster Dragon and put it into your soul to like fix that cross ride number if you missed it. Uh, so that's a really nice addition. So some people like to run that for the safety. Some people, um, I've seen a couple of people run Apocalypse Bat. Basically, when it boosts a blaster, you can Soul Blast 1 to um, uh, make it gain 4k. So basically, it's a 10k booster. So with a Rear Guard Phantom Blaster Overlord, it's 21k column. With a Rear Guard PBD, it's a Phantom Phantom Blaster Dragon, it's a 20k column. So not as much of a payoff as in Kagero, but still a little bit. So I personally don't think there's space for it, but you know, you never know. Some people do run Dark Side Pegasus. It's an on place for that turn, given another unit plus 2k. Basically, making it so that like your other columns can hit the cross ride numbers 
and actually, you know, against those matchups, be able to actually hit them for magical numbers. So it's actually pretty important for that reason only. And so people do run this card a fair bit. Looking at the grade 2s, we have Blaster Dark. So if you have Blaster Javelin in the soul, he gains 1k permanently. And then Vanguard Circle on place, you may kind of lost 2 and retire any of your opponent's rearguards. And this card can also be used in Royal Paladin. So that's, of course, important for Majesty Lore Blaster. In Majesty Lore Blaster, this card is run as a 4 of because you do need to find it in order to use the skill. However, in, Ro in Shadows itself, it's like a 1 or a 2 of. So like the one you get from the story is like sometimes even enough. You might want to run two just in case you, like... I mean, thing is, even if you damage it, you literally can't, because going first, you ride Javelin and search it. Going second, you don't take a damage before you ride Javelin and search it. Only reason why is if you draw into it from your starting draw, and then you don't get the search from Blaster Javelin, so you don't get to plus in that sense, but at least you still have the right chain, so it kind of works out, but some people, most people, I think, run two for that reason, to, like, not draw into it too early, but that Counter Blast 2 is basically never used because Shadows are a very, very Counter Blast heavy clan, and for Royals as well, it's pretty Counter Blast heavy too, so you don't really use it. The main Counter Blast investment, however, is the main, so she is a Rearguard Circle on place. You may Counter Blast 1 and discard a card and draw two. So basically, this is like the best kind of plus it's a one like you literally filter through your deck you get to discard unnecessary cards you get to draw into new cards new pieces you know you can draw into perfect guards you can draw into your final blaster overlords you know other key cards that you might need and so she's really great for that reason and usually where your first couple of counter blasts is going to go into and she's 5k power so boosted with something like a karen it still makes 13 so therefore you can hit like the end you can hit final blaster overlord majesty lord blaster all that stuff so she puts in some work and i mean she is going to be a four of a very important card then we have Curse Lancer, which is your uh, when it hits the Vanguard, counter charge 1, so the only form of counter charge in the clan so far. Vaha is not run at all, she is in when her attack hits, counter blast 2 to draw, you don't need it. Uh, Maka actually is not really run either because of how counter blast heavy the deck is and how much you already generate advantage just through the main and bad bar car. So her skill is, however, Vanguard and Rearguard Circle when placed, counter blast 2, and then you search your deck for any grade 1 and call it in the same column as this unit. So it is quite restrictive, but you can still put it to use um, if you need to, but generally you kind of don't. So like, you already, like I said, the grade 2s are really good in this clan, you just don't really need it in that sense. Uh, another grade 2 that I don't have, sadly, is the grade 2 Masquerade. So he's a 12k attacker if you have a, a Blaster Vanguard. So that's pretty important because it hits MLB for magic numbers and boosted by basically anything that's above 5k. It'll also hit magic numbers against Crossrise, which is very important. Then we have Donnerschlag, not really run because it, if you don't have a Final Blaster Dragon or a Blaster Dark as your Vanguard, then it's only a 7k. So the moment you're right into Final Blaster Overlord, which is what you mainly want to sit on, it just becomes 7k, so it's pretty useless. So we don't really want to run that. Uh, Rugos is your 10k vanilla, some people run this. Uh, nobody really runs this grade 2, it's an on attack, discard 1, gains 4k, which is not that good. Uh, before we move on to the good grade 3s, let's go over some of the other not so good ones. So we have Dark Metal Dragon, during your turn, gains 4k, nothing too great. Uh, then we have the Gujion, which is Counter Blast 2, gain 4k, also not that great. Uh, this one is a good card. Finally, the Mega Blast, uh, during the beginning of your main phase, Soul Charge 1, gains 2k, and then when his heck hits, you may Soul Blast 6, Counter Blast 4, to retire all of your opponent's rear guards. So, for Mega Blast, it's not too bad, but as a card, compared to what else you have in the clan, it's not that great. Uh, then, let's get into the main grade 3. So, the best budget grade 3 that you have is the Dark Dictator, so he cannot be boosted, and uh, during your turn, he gains plus 2k for every unit you have, uh, for every rear guard you have to make up for that. And then, he has an act skill, which is Soul Blast 3, and for that turn, two of your front row rear guards get 5k. Now, this actually is run as a one of in the regular Shadow Paladin build, because when you're going for final turn and you need the really big, chunky columns to actually hit them for magic numbers, this guy puts in the work. Like, this guy really does come in handy in doing what he needs to do and making those big columns, but keep in mind that you might Soul Blast out of your cross ride, so do make sure to stay accountable in that regard. Then we have two arts for Phantom Blaster Dragon. This one you get from V Metals, whereas this one is the one you pull from the Gacha. So, uh, if you have a Blaster Dark in Soul, he has a permanent plus 1k on top of his power. And then he has an act that got buffed, which is Cattle Boss 2, and retire 3 of your rearguards. And then you retire one of your opponent's rearguards, so you can pop an intercept. And then he gains for that turn a 10k bonus power, as well as plus 1 crit. So this is really good. The addition of that retire really made this card a lot better, because now you can like retire some of the useless cards you have, like the Fool Bow, the Bad Bear Car, and things like that. 
and then also retire one of your opponents, so it's like a two for three for one basically, so you're minusing two in a way, but you're getting that extra crit which will take out your opponent's PG, which, you know, is a somewhat of a trade-off, but you use him situationally, you don't want to abuse him too much, but he's definitely a nice situational card, and of course he leads into the super buff cross ride that is Phantom Blaster Overlord, so cross ride means that if you have Phantom Blaster Dragon in the soul, he will be a 13k base permanently, and on top of that, when he attacks the Vanguard, you may Persona Blast, and he will gain for that turn plus 10k power and a crit. And yes, you heard it right, you just need to discard a copy of Phantom Blaster Overlord. You do not need to Counter Blast 3, no Soul Blast, no Counter Blast needed, just discard another copy of him to gain that 10k and a crit. So, it got buffed a lot, and that's great, but that's not where the buffs end. He got another new skill which says, Vanguard Circle Counter Blast 2, and retire one of your own rear guards. And if you do, you choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So, literally a better version of Phantom Blaster Dragon's skill. It's absolutely amazing. You can use this more than once. So if your opponent's on like five damage and they set up two intercepts, it's just like, nope, Cattle Blast 4, retire two of my own, retire those two intercepts, go for game, you know? It's magical, it's great. It does what it needs to do, and thus Shadow Paladin becomes this really amazing, like, tanky, resource generating grindy deck that can like just pop off on your opponent whenever it really wants to it doesn't really have any bad matchups but it doesn't have any like insta win matchups either it's a super well balanced deck honestly they really made shadows super good in zero this time around and i'm really glad that they made them the way that they did so as you can see i wasn't lucky i didn't pull pbos in japanese but i'm hoping to change that in the english version but that's basically it that's what the first wave of shadows is and just out of the box they're really amazing and i know people will ask this and in japanese the shadow paladin rate up was about like two weeks into the new set release so if you're not gunning for top ranks with shadows for these first two weeks then you might want to wait for the shadow paladin rate up because if you don't want anything else like if you don't want mlb don't want the end don't want the other two clans and just want shadows i recommend waiting but if you want even a little bit want the other clans then you can roll on day one when the new set comes out but on that note that basically covers everything so once again if you want a uh, kind of like tips on how to build your deck better based on what you pull i recommend checking out kai's video but otherwise that's basically it for me and one last reminder on monday at 8 30 a.m cest june 1st we are going to be doing the big live stream for the new sets uh, coming out in both English and Japanese. So it's going to be a big stream. I want to break the 1,000 viewer record uh, this month. And so hopefully I, I can see you guys there for that stream. But on that note, that's going to be it for me today. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.